Hello, everybody. So today I'll be talking about the research paper, which is the title as Multivariate Time Series Anomaly Detection via Graph Attention Network. So in this paper, uh, the authors have mainly focused on the multivariate part of a time series. And they have also applied uh, attention layers uh, to capture temporal and uh, feature level dimension interactions. So in this paper, the authors have devised a self-supervised framework. By self-supervised, uh, we mean that the model was not trained using actual uh, labels, but rather it was trained using the data itself. And uh, they have used uh, graph attention layers, as I mentioned earlier, to capture temporal and feature dimension interactions. And to optimize their model, the authors have used two different loss functions. One is the forecasting based loss, where they are trying to predict future uh, time series values. Uh, based on the current uh, timestamp values. And also they have uh, used another loss function called reconstruction loss, where they are trying to uh, reconstruct the original input of, from some uh, latent space vector. So next I'll move on to uh, the architecture of the model. So here we have the brief uh, high level architecture. So first, uh, let's say we have the input data, which let's say have uh, n different time steps, and it has n uh, k different uh, features. So the input would be n cross k. Uh, dimensional matrix. Then the uh, input is being passed on to a preprocessor and a 1D convolution layer. So the preprocessor will normalize the timestamp values uh, based on a simple min max killer. And the 1D convolution will apply uh, convolution kernels of default size of 7. Uh, and that will be applied using a, a sliding window across the time dimension, which will help us to extract uh, high level uh, features across the time dimension. And after that, uh, the output of the preprocessor and one day convolution uh, will be passed through uh, two different uh, graph attention layer. The top one is feature oriented, which will capture the feature dimension interactions and the bottom one is time oriented which will capture the time dimension interactions so before i go into the details let me just go through what uh, graph attention layers uh, work so let's say <clears throat> you have n different nodes and uh, and you have some initial embeddings of all those n different nodes, and you want to update uh, the embeddings of all those n nodes based on uh, what uh, we what a particular node have in its surrounding or in its neighbors. So how uh, graph attention layer works is it will um, first assign a attention weight between two different nodes, saying that node, uh, let's say node i should give uh, attention of aij to node j. And then uh, based on the attention, it will sum product uh, the embeddings of all other uh, j nodes. Uh, and j can be the neighbors of the node i. And then it will pass it to a sigmoid function to uh, get the updated embedding for node i. So for here, if you see the formula, 
H I J is the updated node embedding of the node I. And then we have A I J, which uh, tells us the how much attention uh, node I should give to node J. And V J is the and V J is the uh, embedding, the initial embedding of node J. And then uh, we aggregate the embeddings from all the J nodes by weighting them with the attention weight and then sum it. And uh, uh, J could be basically the neighbors that the node I have. And then uh, the sum product is passed through a sigmoid function to get the updated uh, node embedding for node I. Now, uh, how this AIJ or the attention weight has been created. So, below we have the formula. So, if you see here, uh, the authors first concatenate the, to get the attention weight between node I and node J, they first concatenate the initial embedding of node I and node J pass through some linear layers, through some learnable weights W, and then pass it through a liquid ELU, which will give you EIJ. And then they normalize EIJ through a soft, uh, soft mass function, which will finally give you the attention weight AIJ. Okay. So let's go back uh, to our feature and time-oriented graph attention layers. So using the same for our formula of graph attention layers, they try to create these two feature and time-oriented gaps. So um, as I mentioned earlier, feature-oriented will try to capture um, or aggregate <clears throat> uh, the embedding of a feature based on other features. So what it will do is, let's say we have uh, a different features and it, uh, the authors have tried to uh, create an initial embedding for all those K features by stacking the uh, values across all, the whole time, all the N timestamp. So all these uh, K features would have the initial embedding of uh, dimension N. And then, uh, for a, uh, then the, they will compute uh, the attention weight of a feature I uh, with uh, with a, another feature that's a feature J and based on the attention weight we'll just sum product uh, the initial embedding across all the features to get the updated uh, embedding of uh, feature I and the final updated uh, embedding of feature I would also be an n-dimensional vector so the output of the feature oriented gap would be basically a k cross and dimensional matrix where k would be the number of features and n would be basically uh, the M final embedding dimension length of each of the features. Okay. And uh, similarly, we have the time oriented gap which does the same thing as the feature oriented get, but they reverses the position of time and uh, feature. So uh, it will try to create a new embedding for each of the timestamp uh, based on the embedding of all the other timestamp. And each timestamp would have an updated embedding size of uh, embedding of length K. So the output of the time-oriented get would be n cross k, where we have n timestamp, and the embedding length of each of the n timestamp is k. And we also would have the output of the preprocessor and the 1D convolution, which would have the uh, size of n cross k. So finally, we concatenate these three uh, matrices, the feature get k cross n matrix, the original 
input n cross k matrix and the time oriented get uh, output n cross k matrix and stack them across the feature dimension. So after concatenating, we would have a matrix of dimension n cross 3k. Then uh, the concatenated matrix is passed through a GRU to basically uh, compress the whole information across the end time series, uh, timestamps into one timestamp. So the output of a GRU would be basically one cross. Uh, it could be 3K or you might uh, change that also uh, based on what you define as the dimension for the hidden uh, state of the GRU. But if you keep it as default, it should be the output of the GRU should be a matrix of one cross 3K uh, dimension. And after that, uh, the matrix of one cross 3K is passed to two different uh, loss function. First one is a forecasting based uh, model, uh, uh, which basically mm, tries to predict uh, given uh, given the one cross 3K matrix, it will try to predict uh, what will be the next timestamps uh, values. So it will try to predict basically the next timestamp, which is uh, one cross uh, the K uh, dimensional vector. It will try to predict that. And based on that, you can generate uh, the, uh, the, the the loss function and basically an MSC loss, uh, which is mentioned here. And another uh, pathway is through the reconstruction loss function, uh, where uh, given the input as one cross three k, the one cross three k, the reconstruction based model will try to predict uh, what was the original input. That is the actual uh, n cross k input matrix. Okay. Uh, the authors for the forecasting based model have used a simple uh, MLP layer. And for the reconstruction loss, they have uh, mentioned to have used a variational autoencoder. So finally, uh, the losses that we get, we would get from the forecasting model and the reconstruction model are being uh, added up and that added up loss will be used to optimize this whole architecture. And finally, during uh, inference time, uh, if let's say your loss for a particular uh, sample or instance is more than a threshold, then you can mention that particular instance or uh, window of your time series uh, could contain anomalies. So that's from my side today. Uh, in the next video, I'll try to uh, bring up uh, the code that I have uh, created uh, for this particular research paper and tr would try to share with you guys. Uh, please do uh, like uh, and share my video. You have uh, learned from it and please do subscribe my channel. Meet you soon.